During World War II, Nazi German Führer Adolf Hitler had a number one enemy. So much so that he placed a bounty of 250,000 Reichsmarks on this man's head. That's way more than one million dollars in today's money. But this enemy was not the Soviet leader Joseph Stalin or one of his army generals. The man was a voice, a very iconic, deep, instantly recognizable voice to everyone living in the Soviet Union during World War II and to many Russians today. The voice had a name, Yuri Levitan. Levitan was born into a Jewish family of a tailor in an ancient Russian city of Vladimir, not too far from Moscow, in 1914. In his late teens, Levitan decided to conquer Moscow and move there. He really wanted to pursue an acting career, but the cinema school to which he applied turned him down. Well, he did the next best thing. He got a job at a Moscow radio station. In fact, he saw an ad for this job as he was leaving the cinema school which had just turned him down. So he was really undeterred. However, he had a pretty thick provincial accent as it was described at the time. So he had to practice and practice and practice for hours until he sounded like a true Moscovite. When Levitan was only 19 years old, the powerful Soviet leader and arguably one of the most powerful men in the world, Joseph Stalin, heard his broadcast. In fact, it was his first broadcast. The uh, young man was reading newspapers like Pravda in the evening. Joseph Stalin was so impressed that he called up the radio committee to find out who this man was. It was this voice and this voice only that the most powerful man in the world wanted Levitan to read his party congress report the very next day. How can you say no to that? So in the morning, Levitan received a package with Stalin's speech and he ended up doing a great job with it. He read it without any mistakes. So from then on, Levitan became Stalin's announcer as well as a very well-known media personality at, in the 1930s. Adolf Hitler perceived the Soviet Union as additional living space, Lebensraum, for Germany because of its sheer size and rich natural resources. And in Hitler's view, those who actually lived in the Soviet Union, such as the Slavs and others, were lower according to his racial hierarchy. As a result, Hitler invaded the Soviet Union through Operation Barbarossa on a fateful day, June 22nd, 1941. By autumn, the Nazi German troops were within 50 kilometers or so of Moscow. The Soviet government took down all the radio towers in the Moscow area to prevent the Nazi German strikes. So Levitan was evacuated far, far eastward to present day Yekaterinburg. Back then it was known as Sverdlovsk in the Oral Mountains. The announcer was forced to live in secrecy and he even had his own bodyguards for protection and security because effectively he was the voice of an entire nation. Furthermore, the news media even disseminated, deliberately disseminated false information about Levitan's appearance to protect him even more. Hitler recognized his impact not only as a source of 
information to the Soviet citizens, but also a source of morale and resilience. Thus, he placed the bounty on his head, as I mentioned earlier, 250,000 Reichsmarks, more than a million dollars. And a special SS group was tasked with Levitan's assassination, so the secrecy was not unwarranted. Indeed, according to the Soviet Marshal Konstantin Rakasovsky, Levitan's voice alone was worth an entire division. That is approximately 10,000 men. Wow. So, in Sverdlovsk, Levitan received information for his broadcasts by phone. He also narrated documentaries at this time. He was then transferred to the Soviet Radio's Committee's headquarters in March of 1943. It was located in present-day Samara. Back then, the city was called Kuybyshev on the Volga River. Hitler's number one enemy announced air raids, uh, read text provided by the Soviet Information Bureau, which was a top Soviet news agency at the time. As well, he announced victories in various battles. During the war, Levitan read over 2,000 news bulletins and 120 emergency messages in total. He broadcasts usually began with, quote, attention, this is Moscow speaking, end quote, which became his trademark and is recognizable to many people to this day. Since these messages were actually not recorded when they're broadcast, the announcer had to re-record them for historical purposes approximately 15 years after the end of the war. At the end of the war in Europe, in which the Soviet Union was responsible for up to approximately 80% of Nazi German losses, it was appropriate that it would be Levitan and no one else that would read the Nazi German surrender to the public. In fact, the man had to read the announcement directly from the Kremlin instead of going to a, a radio station because he simply could not get through the crowd that gathered at the Red Square eagerly waiting to hear it. And Levitan himself recalled that as he was reading it, he teared up. 1945 Подписан акт о безоговорочной капитуляции германских вооруженных сил. Великая отечественная война, которую вел советский народ против немецко-фашистских захватчиков, победоносно завершилась. Германия полностью разгромлена. Товарищи красноармейцы... Краснофлотцы, сержанты, старшины, офицеры армии флота, генералы, адмиралы и маршалы, поздравляю вас с победоносным завершением Великой Отечественной войны. Вознаменование полной победы над Германией. Сегодня, 9 мая, в День Победы, в 22 часа, Столица нашей Родины Москва от имени Родины салютует доблестным войскам Красной Армии, кораблям и частям военно-морского флота, одержавшим эту блестящую победу 30 артиллерийскими залпами из тысячи орудий. Вечная слава героям! павшим в боях за свободу и независимость нашей Родины. Да здравствует победоносная Красная Армия и военно-морской флот! 
верховный главнокомандующий маршал Советского Союза Сталин. After the war, the famous announcer was somewhat narrowly typecast and tasked with reading important government announcements, messages, and announcing monumental events such as the first human space light flight of Yuri Gagarin on April 12, 1961. Much like during the war, Levitan also focused on documentary making and reading lectures. Levitan passed away in 1983 when he was 68 years old from a heart attack. Some consider him the most famous voice of the 20th century. That's all I have for you guys. Thank you for tuning in. I wanted to cover something more brief and uplifting after my last two videos. I'd love to hear your comments and I really appreciate it when you like, share, subscribe and go to my buy me a coffee. Thank you. I will see you in the next one and that's it. Bye.